Hi everybody, this is Osprey Eye from MyChartCoach.com and we're going to take a look at some of the stocks that closed in play on Friday. Okay, first let's take a look at ICLD. Okay, this stock has been on, on a, a very nice uptrend since it's been uh, uh, delisted down to the over-the-counter. It's now an OTC stock. It closed up 60% today. Notice uh, RSI is above 70 and FASTO closed all the way up at 95, so it is in the over power zone. Uh, many times uh, over the counter stocks have a hard time heading higher uh, at overbought levels so we'll see if this pulls back as well takes a little breather next week um, or if it can keep pushing higher at overbought levels if you look here on ADX with plus DI minus DI plus DI right here is gone parabolic notice how it's shot straight up it, uh, it's at its highest level in uh, many months and so uh, this is just a signal that maybe the the runs getting a little bit ahead of itself okay the, the key on the chart here is the uh, close above the 100 day simple moving average that's this gold line right here so it did close well above that level and that's after uh, turning the 50-day simple moving average which is down here the green line into support uh, the close on Monday above the 50-day simple moving average was the signal that there was more upside potential and then it went all the way up to the hundred and ended up closing up above the, the one red flag is the this gap between high of day on Thursday and low of day on Friday that gap is not filled if you see a pullback and it drops below the hundred-day simple moving average that gap could fill and the bottom of the gap becomes the reload target. Going forward, bulls want to see the 100-day simple moving average hold and a push through resistance. Now it's hitting this November resistance zone. So if it can push through that and keep heading higher, the next simple moving average is all the way up here at the 200-day simple moving average at 26. So uh, you know there's going to be horizontal resistance on the way up, but this has uh, made a very strong move on the daily chart. As you can see, there's huge volume behind the move. Now, now let's take a look at the 15-minute chart. On this candle, each uh, on this chart, each candle represents. 15 minutes of trading and so uh, this is just a, a four-day chart and, and what this is showing is the uh, you can see the gap okay this is the close on Friday and this is the open and this is the low of day um, if you if you bring this down this is the uh, this is the uh, uh, Top, top of the gap and this is the bottom of the gap and then I had the uh, you know I was showing that this uh, what happened was is there was a, uh, a move a gap open above resistance on the seventh notice the seventh uh, resistance zone so there's a gap above that level if you see a pullback it could drop down here to uh, around uh, 29 0 0.029 and that's the the hundred simple moving average on the 15 minute chart that would fill the gap so go, going forward what, what bulls want to see is they want to see this middle Bollinger Band hold that's this dotted line currently at 0 0.040 and so if that if candles stay above that level that'll signal more upside potential if it pulls back and breaks that level you could see a drop down to the lower Bollinger Band or possibly the 50 simple moving average notice there was a strong move into the close with a, a, a bullish volume spike and there was a bullish crossover on MACD on the 8 13 and 5 and then the 12 26 and 9 started crossing over as well those are all signals uh, of more upside potential and then uh, th there was a parabolic SAR bullish flip. The dots flip below. So it closed really strong. It's just a matter of whether or not can it keep the bullish momentum uh, go, going through on Monday. Okay, now let's look at the weekly chart for ICLD. We always like to look at multiple time frames. We like to use the 15-minute chart, the daily chart, and the weekly chart. And here on the weekly chart, you can see that the, the big move this week was the close above the middle Bollinger Band. Right here, this is the dotted purple line. That's a huge move for the stock. Notice that it's been trading below the middle Bollinger Band for many, many weeks, many months. Uh, uh, it's been in this very long downtrend. Okay, so the break above, and notice that all these candles were forming below the EMA4, that's the pink line, until you get to this candle right here. That was the close above. This was signaling the chart was heating up. Notice the close above the EMA4 was also with the volume spike. This is what we call the load. This is traders, you know, taking positions early that have patience and time to wait for the setup to develop. And then when you had uh, this big spike right here, this was the big load. This was people uh, that, that were getting ready for the move that happened this week. Uh, no, notice the long lower wick, the big volume bar, okay, down at the bottom of the chart, and then this big follow through this week. There was a bullish uh, crossover EMA4, crossed over EMA8, that, that's signaling the chart is heating up, and um, as long as this middle Bollinger Band turns into support, which is also the 20-week moving average, that will signal the possible start of a new uptrend. That puts the next resistance level, you know, uh, up here, this November resistance that we we're talking about on the daily chart. Notice how it's cleaned up here on the weekly chart. If it can get through that, then the upper Bollinger Band is the next target at 0.067. Okay, if you uh, the, the next simple moving average is all the way up here at, at the 50-week uh, simple moving average at 34. So yeah, so this is a really strong move for ICLD. We'll see 
see if it can continue next week. Okay, let's look at CARA. This is one of the marijuana sector stocks that has been doing uh, really well. Um, it, it had a pullback this last week. Um, if you notice, it had hit up here at a uh, this high up uh, up about 1950, and um, and then it pulled back here, and now it's testing the middle Bollinger Band. It's back down to the bottom of the channel. Uh, notice the ascending support line. It's it's hitting the bottom of this uptrending channel, and it's testing the middle Bollinger Band. If the middle Bollinger Band breaks, you could see a drop down to the 50-day simple moving average down here at 1392. So it's really important for the uptrend to remain intact that this middle Bollinger Band holds. Um, if it does hold, then, then it could bounce off if it gets back above the middle uh, these EMAs uh, that are all clustered together. It could get back up here and retest 18. So this is a crucial level. If you see a close below the middle Bollinger Band and it turns into resistance, you're looking at a drop down to the 50-day simple moving average and a possible new downtrend starting. So uh, and one of the red flags here was notice the move was on this big volume spike. Um, you know, there was, that, that, that's not what bulls want to see. And there were also bearish crossovers on MACD on both time frames. So those are all red flags along with the parabolic SAR bear flip. We've been talking about the bull flips. Notice the, the dots were below the candles as the share price was heading higher. But then now the dots have flipped above. The, the candles came down and they hit the p p parabolic SAR level. Dots flipped above. That signals a potential downside risk, possibly a new downtrend starting. Okay, now let's look at N NMM. This is a marine transportation sector stock. The, the shipping sector has really been heating up. We've been posting information on the Baltic Dry Index. It's been on fire. And uh, N NMM is, is one of the stocks that has been participating in the rally. This is the daily chart. Uh, first of all, look at RSI and Fasto. They're both at overbought levels. So it'll have to push higher at overbought levels. We'll see if it can do that. Um, notice that it, it has had pullbacks in the past above 80 on Fasto. Fasto. Uh, currently, there's this very strong uptrend going. It's a it's a multi month uptrend, and, and then you've got a, a, a move here of, above this ascending uh, resistance line on this channel. So in above the upper Bollinger Band, so it was, it was it was a frothy close. The candles might work back into the bands and back into this channel. If they do that, then uh, EMA four at two twenty five is going to be the first uh, support level. Very strong stocks, right? EMA four support higher. There was a close this week. Of Above the, the 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 key resistance level, which was uh, <clears throat> back here in November. And so that is putting uh, um, the open in November, uh, the the high open and uh, the the high of November on deck. So it's putting this 270 to 295 three dollar range uh, on deck. And so that's going to be the levels to break for for NMM going forward. The 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 MACD bull crosses were signaling more upside potential along with the big volume spike. Um, this is a very nice uptrend. When stocks are breaking out, we like to look at the weekly chart. The the uh, weekly chart here for NMM is showing uh, the RSI uh, uh, hitting 69. So once it gets above 70, it'll be overbought levels. Fasto closed at a very frothy at 98. 100 is maxed on Fasto. So it does. it is signaling that it is, is temporarily at overbought levels. There was a bullish crossover starting on ADX. Notice the green line, which is plus DI, was crossing in ADX, the black line, to the upside. That signals the bulls are, are, are really heating up and taking control. Notice this uh, move last time above. Uh, th there was a big spike. Okay, so th this is a very strong uh, weekly chart. Uh, if, if you look here at the, the giant volume bar in November, and then this move above the middle Bollinger Band and above the, the, the 50 uh, week moving average, th those were all signals that this was in play for a uh, uh, potential up new uptrend. And so this was what we call the, the load, the huge volume spike and the move above resistance. And so these players are likely still, still riding and that they're holding for more upside. Side. These are patient, you know, players with money that have patience. And so uh, the close above the middle Bollinger Band and the 50-week moving average, that turns it into a good longer-term swing trade. As long as candles are staying above the middle Bollinger Band and this green line, the 50-week moving average, this is a really strong chart, and the uptrend should continue. Sometimes you just need patience. Everybody wants to have uh, big gains every single day. Um, some people have 9 to 5s, and they need swing trades, and, and this is what we like for a swing trade chart. We like candles forming above the middle Bollinger Band, forming above the 50-day 
uh, 50 week simple moving average and heading higher. And that's when we know we've got a good swing trade chart. Okay, the next level to break is going to be up here at this uh, $3 range that we were just talking about. That's the high uh, of November. Um, the next uh, simple moving average is the 50 week moving average at 395. Uh, you know, it's got to get through this December uh, resistance zone here. Uh, this is also the, the $3 level. It hit December resistance. Notice how it was support. If it can get above that, then you're talking about a run to the 100 week moving average average. Very good volume behind the move. So uh, yeah, so we'll see if NMM can continue. Now let's look at RNN. This is another stock that has been on fire. Um, it's had this really nice move over the last uh, couple weeks. And um, uh, first of all, let's look at RSI at, 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 and, and FASTO. They're both at overbought levels. So it remains to be seen if it can head higher in the overbought power zone. And once again, we have a parabolic move on Plus DI and ADX. Okay, so that's showing that this is just a, a, a very aggressive strong move to the upside. Uh, the, the, the close on, uh, uh, so this here is the is the weekly chart. Since uh, RNN, I could show you the daily chart, it's showing that it's breaking out and it's busting out to, to high levels. And so uh, what we're looking at now, it, it, if you could see here that this is uh, hitting um, above the, the, the 100 week moving average, it's the gold line. And, and I posted some charts during the week showing that was the level we wanted to see a close above. And that was at 37. And the close this week was at 30 so it did close above the key resistance level. That's from back here in, in, in this January or, or the, you know this February March uh, uh, resistance zone. From, from back in 2016, it closed right at that level. And so that's going to be a big level to break. If it can if it can stay above this 50-week uh, moving average next week and close above it and turn it into support, then it could possibly launch off that up to the 200-week moving average and the 300-week moving average, which are both converging up here around 55. So it, it, if, if it fails to stay above the 50-week moving average next week and, and that turns into resistance, if you notice the close was well above the upper Bollinger Band and EMA4, way down here at 29, that would be the big support level on a pullback. If the candles might work back into the bands if they do. You want to see that hold. As long as candles are staying above EMA4 and they're above the, the middle Bollinger Band and, and the 50-week moving average, which turned into support this week with this close above on Tuesday, then, then this is just a super strong chart and the signal is to keep riding. A lot of times what traders like to do is they, they like to take the, uh, when, when stocks hit resistance, they, they take profits and then, and then when it pulls back, they reload on the dip. So let's say 38 turns into resistance, they, they would they would lock in gains there. And then when it came down here at 29, they would reload. Since this is a really strong chart with a strong uptrend, the key is to not leave the trade. You know, key, even if you take profits, you want to watch it and wait for the next re-entry. If the chart's not broken, then, then don't try to fix it. You know, a lot of people will, will uh, you know, they, they, we put out alerts here that this was uh, heating up back here. And, and then people leave when, when a red candle forms and, and uh, they they forget that this stock is still in play and then it has another breakout and they're like oh yeah I remember that one and I, I was looking at it when it was at 16 now it's at 32 and, and and you took your eye off the prize so it's always good to to, to, to keep uh, track of plays even after you take profits if the chart is still strong okay let's look at INAP this is a really uh, good uptrend as well once again we're gonna look at the weekly chart if you look here the the uh, RSI is, is hitting 70 overbought zone. Fasto is at 93 and at overbought levels. It's really frothy, frothy on Fasto. You know, you had this, uh, we've had this really good move on, on plus DI above uh, ADX and, and minus DI. So it shows the bulls are clearly in control. This is another stock that closed above resistance. Look how it looks similar to the last two weekly charts. You know, we, we look for uh, the same patterns and we don't really care about the ticker symbol so much. You know, these ticker symbols change. The names of the companies change, but the patterns never do. The good bullish patterns never do. You're always looking for the same setups. That is the key to success. And so once again, this close above the middle Bollinger Band it, back in December on the giant volume bar, that was the load signal. This was people taking positions that have money, have patience, have time. They can sit back and wait for the play to develop. And so they loaded on, uh, back here. And then now check out how it, it's moved higher. It turned the middle Bollinger Band into support, which is at 161. And then this 
this close above the 50-week moving average back in February, that was your signal that this chart was super ready to go. This uptrend is very strong and, and that there's more upside potential. So if you didn't load back here, th then this was your next level to load at. And, and look at the giant volume bar. A lot of people did. They, they loaded on the break above the 50-week moving average. Why? Why do they do that? Because it signals more upside potential. Because this is what the computer algorithms are set to do. And most of the trading is done through program trading. The programs are using the moving averages for buy and sell points. So that's what we're doing as well. All we're doing is following the money. So you got a giant volume bar here, strong uptrend. Last week was a red candle, but it still closed above EMA4. That was signaling the chart was still strong. Now you had follow through this week with another big uh, volume bar, push above resistance. If it can turn this, this $3 uh, zone into support, then you're looking at a potential run up to 454. Once again, the parabolic star bullish flip, the, the MACD bullish crossovers, those all happened when the, when there was the, the big uh, load candle. These were all telling you that a new uptrend was starting. So if, you're, if you've got a 9 to 5 and you're looking for swing trades, I get this question asked a lot. What you want to see is a bullish weekly chart. When you see the candle setting up on this day, this is this is your opportunity to load at a good level. You know, same thing with the RNN. You know, when you see the big break above the, the middle Bollinger Band, this is your opportunity to load. If you missed it, then you want to load on the break above the 50-week moving average. You know, same thing for NM, NMM. Same thing. Look, break above the middle Bollinger Band, 50-week moving average, giant volume bar, parabolic star, bullish flip. You load. That's the load for the, the uptrend. There you go. So, uh, you know, you can you can make this easy or you can make it hard. Um, JDST is the next stock we're going to look at here. This is the uh, the gold miners bear three times ETF. OK, and so it had been on this really nice uptrend. Um, notice that once again, it was the break above the middle Bollinger Band on the 27th. That was the signal to uh, jump in this play. And then it, it made this move above the, the 50 day simple moving average here on the 6th. And that was the signal of more, more upside potential. And then it started topping out back here on this January uh, resistance zone. Okay, and notice that this is also the uh, bottom of the gap. There was a gap back here in January between the the I believe it was the uh, it was the first week of January, and, and, and the, the gap has been unfilled. And so the share prices hit the the close right right after the bounce when the gap was created. And so that's going to be the key level to break. It's turned into big resistance. If it can get above that, then it has to break the bottom of the gap. If it can do that, then it could fill the gap and run to the 100-day simple moving average at 27. That That's the next target. Now, now it pulled back. And notice how the 50-day the simple moving average has been dropping. It, it's, it held above the 50-day simple moving average. We want to see that level hold, if you're bullish, for a bounce off of that to continue heading higher. If it closes below the 50-day simple moving average, then you're looking at a drop down to the middle Bollinger Band, which is all the way down at 1656. As long as the middle Bollinger Band holds, then the uptrend is intact. If the middle Bollinger Band breaks, then it could signal the possible start of a new downtrend. Notice there was a volume spike on the down day, so that's not what bulls want to see. Um, you've got a start of a bearish crossover on MACD on the 8, 13, and 5. That's another red flag. Another red flag is the parabolic star bear flip. Notice the dots are above the candles. So these are all signals that the chart is cooling down. Also, if you look here at, at on ADX, look at minus DI hooking, you know, it's got the spike up. Those are all signals the bears are starting to take control or the, 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 the I should say, well, the bears, the gold bulls are heating up and, and the gold bears are cooling down. Now, RSI and FASTO are both above 50 and they're in the bull zone. If they stay above 50, that will be a signal the chart is still strong. So staying above 50 on RSI and FASTO and holding the 50 a day simple moving average would be the best scenario for the JDSD bulls. If it, if it breaks down and, and it, it runs to the middle Bollinger Band, that is a must-hold level. If it breaks, it will signal downside risk. Okay, so what do we do when JDSD is cooling down? You go to J, JNUG. Okay, that's JNUG. And this is the Junior Gold Miners Bull, uh, it, it, Junior Gold Miners Index Bull three times. So this is the, uh, if the, the GDX, which is the uh, Gold Miners, if that goes up 5%, this will go up 15 percent and that's what happened on on uh uh, you know, that, that's basically what happened here on Friday. The the, the GDX uh, heated up along with GLD, along with gold, and 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 then uh, the, the junior gold miners spiked. And, and notice that they, they were down here at 30, near 30 on RSI, oversold levels. And now it, it closed up here at 37. So, you know, this is a prior resistance zone. If you can get above that, then the chart will start heating up. Notice FASTO is still above 20 in an oversold levels. So still oversold in 
Fasto. Uh, you, there is a spike up on the ADX on Plus DI. Now, what's interesting is the last time that ADX was down here at this level, that, that Plus DI was down here at this level on ADX, check it out. It was back here in December. And, and, and the spike up on ADX or, or on Plus DI, my fault, the, the green line Plus DI after being so low, was signaled the start of this big run. Now, is this spike up going to signal the start of the next run? I don't know. We'll just have to see if it'll follow through. It's just interesting that, that this is a similar uh, setup. And... Um what we want to, but it's not the same, but it, but it's similar. And so, so you know, we it, it, sometimes Pat, history will repeat. The the bullish development on the charts here is the close above EMA four. Notice how EMA four has been big resistance. The candles were closing above, uh, below during the downtrend. The close above right here on this candle above the pink line it is signaling more upside potential. That whenever you see a big downtrend and there's a close above EMA four, that's a signal of possible trend reversal. Notice that support is holding from back here in December okay it's trying to hold this support zone if that breaks you could see a big drop all the way down here into the uh, you know around 415 or so which was a big support level this 4 to 425 zone was big support level so there's big downside implications if there's a close again below EMA4 if EMA4 continues to be resistance and you see a break below this 525 re uh, support zone you're going to see a drop all the way down into the 4s possibly down to 4 425 so the uh, it's very important for the JNUG bulls for the gold miner bulls here that that the, the EMA4 turns into support. The next resistance level to break is going to be EMA8 at 645. If it can get above that level, then you could be talking about a run back up to the middle Bollinger Band, which is converging with the 150-day and, and simple moving averages. Notice the 50-day simple moving average is crossing over the 100-day simple moving average to the upside. That is a bullish signal that, that the chart is building strength. It has broken down, and so we'll just have to see what happens. You know, uh, We'll have to see what happens with all the uh, Fed uh, rate hikes. Usually that's bearish for gold. We'll see, um, you know, gold has been under big pressure and now it's getting a nice bounce. Notice that MACD is, uh, was pinched here and it's starting to uh, bullish cross on the 8, 13, and 5. So yeah, so keep an eye on JNUG. Um, you know, if it holds the uh, EMA4 support, it has more upside potential. If it closes below EMA4 on the daily chart, that signals more downside risk. Okay, here's the last chart. This is DSX. Okay, the uh, you know, we've been talking about the Baltic Dry Index. Um, you can look at it over here Th this thing has been on fire um, you know down here at uh, um, 685 back on the uh, f uh, February 14th and now it's all the way up here at 1086 it's been it's been running super hard and um, we've been watching the the, the uh, shipping sector stocks you know trying to uh, get rallies going we, we talked about NMM earlier in this uh, video and, and another one to keep an eye on is DSX okay so notice that it's had this uh, down trend going um, below the middle Bollinger Band. It's been trying to turn the middle Bollinger Band into support and it's created this ascending resistance line. It's hitting that level right now. If it can break above that, which is around 395, then it could run up here and test the upper Bollinger Band at 408 and then these high close resistance levels. The big level of the break is going to be right above 425, around 426, 427. If it can close above this closing price back in the first week of February, that's going to be your signal that it has more upside potential. In order to get going, it has to start forming candles above the middle Bollinger Band, which is the dotted purple line. It's also the 20-day simple moving average in order to head higher. If, if it fails to turn this level into support, it's going to signal downside risk. Notice it's trying to hold the green line here. The green line is the 50-day simple moving average. If it can stay above the 50-day simple moving average and the middle Bollinger Band, that'll signal upside potential. If it closes back below those levels and they turn into resistance, that'll signal downside risk. You could see a drop all the way down here to the bottom of this channel, which is this is the ascending support line. It's all the way down here around 340, which is lining up with the 100-day simple moving average. So those are the support levels down below. Um, breakout above. So you're looking at a potential drop down to 340 if the middle Bollinger Band and 50-day simple moving average turn into resistance, and a potential run up to uh, 425 to 435 if uh, resistance breaks, if the ascending resistance breaks. So keep an eye on DSX next week. Um, if you notice on Thursday, there was this long lower wick on this candle along with the volume 
volume spike. That, that's what we call the load. Um, we'll see if they follow through. It looks like some players are trying to uh, load up here for a potential run higher. We'll see if it can follow through. There was a bullish crossover on the 8, 13, and 5. Keep an eye on the 12, 26, and 9. It's pinched right now. If it's a crossover, that's going to signal upside potential. So, uh, and, and then there was a crossover here on ADX with plus DI of the green line crossing the red line minus DI to the upside. So if the green line stays above the red and black lines, that's going to signal more upside potential. And one more thing, RSI and Fasto are both above 50. They've broken into the bull zone. If they stay above 50, that will be another signal that the chart is building strength and it'll signal more upside potential. Okay, if you like these, this video and you want to learn more about technical analysis, um, please check us out at MyChartCoach.com and our YouTube ch channel at uh, MyChartCoach.com. And we also have a, a live chat where we teach during the trading day. Okay, thank you.